Oakley Doakley. Well, yeah, um, I guess, you know, it seems like we don't have too, too many people in here right now, but I'm sure they'll come in as we go. And obviously the recording and everything will help. Yeah. Um, for, uh, yeah. you know, for crypto hours right now, I mean, I'm, it's not it's not prime time, I think, but it's cool um, because UTC timing is, I think, when I see the most like people on. But we're West Coast boys. So, I mean. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. I think right, right now it's kind of nighttime for the UTC folk, so it's uh, we try and get it in before like midnight for them, and that's why it's gonna be <laughs> yeah. nice and early for us. It's but, Friday night for them, dude. I wouldn't be listening to uh, to me either. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, but yeah, so um, I guess if anything, might as well obviously just hop into it. Um, so, uh, of course, as I said that. I don't have any of my questions up here, Derp. but yeah, no. Um, <laughs> the, the easy one is obviously, um, you know, I guess I should start off with saying we're, we're here to chat about DocuShield and everything. Uh, it's an upcoming IDO to KD launch. I, I believe it's today that registration starts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Registration so, opens today, man. Um, Exciting. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, just give us a brief, uh, you know, basically a background on yourself and um yeah, what, you know what brought you uh you know to crypto and and so on yeah um sure so i'm like a serial entrepreneur since i was a kid selling whatever i could uh, you know um yeah it sounds a little bad but you know started off in in uh in elementary selling pogs uh, i don't know if, if you're old enough to remember that man i'm not sure but uh pogs were the thing back then and oh, yeah uh, we, for sure yeah, we had a bunch of just blank ones and we would, you know, slap on some like comic book strips and stuff like on them and then just resell them um, at school. Because it'd be like, cool, I got this awesome Batman Pog and, uh, you know, things like that. Sold cassettes in high school, um, started a business uh, right after high school doing a music venue um, underground, just completely like warehouse style. And it went well for a while. Um, after that, I got right into uh, marketing. And um, mostly with the with the print industry. So I worked for a company called uh, Mindfire and we were in the marketing automation sector, kind of right when marketing automation was really getting some traction. And so I was there for seven years. I did the training uh, for the company and a lot of the product support. And um, yeah, man, ever since. And then after that, did a few more business ventures, went off independently and did marketing, um, opened up a restaurant um, with a couple partners and um that uh, during COVID is when the restaurant stuff kind of died down. Um, we had to shut down. It was, I remember our last day was St. Patty's day. And so we had just stocked up on all this, all, all this beer and, <laughs> and everything. And we had to shut down that day. So after that, needless to say, I woke up with a big hangover and um, I decided to look into, you know, I was like, what am I going to do? Well, uh, let's check out crypto because I had gotten into crypto a couple of years earlier, made a bunch of investments and, you know, was really following it. But getting into the restaurant industry, I just submerged myself in that industry and like forgot everything else, you know. So um, when I looked at my portfolio, it was like, wow, wow, some of these things had really went up and it was uh exciting and you know so that left with a little bit of funds to play around with you know there in the crypto space started a few projects that eventually didn't really um pan out the way i i had envisioned them and it was just a really weird time with with covid and everything um right in in the cusp of it so um yeah man once the crypto bug hit again you know i couldn't really shake it uh we, we came back as a restaurant and we're still open um but when I had my firstborn son, he, um, I took another couple months off now to, to spend time with him. And that's when I started thinking, I started getting all this paperwork and all of this stuff that has to do with, you know, himself, birth certificates, insurance paperwork. And, uh, for myself, man, I really don't care tracking all that stuff. Like if I, if I'm in trouble, it's like, whatever, <laughs> but, uh, but, um, yeah, for, for him, I was like a little bit more a little bit more, um, you know, looking into how am I going to protect this stuff? And I can see you talking back on Zoom. Sorry to stop. That's why I'm kind of stuttering. But I think your Twitter space is muted still. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I, yeah. Okay, I'm, cool, I'm, cool. It's probably just the <laughs> Zoom that you hear. Uh, yeah, my... I thought I muted myself, so... What microphone <laughs> no, no, no problem. Switch. Yeah. 
Sorry, guys. I'm usually not at such a stutterer, but I'm like looking at him talk to me, and then uh, <laughs> I'm not hearing anything. So, yeah, but, maybe uh, I'll just mute myself. There you go. That might help. <laughs> now you want to see that. All good, man. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> all good. So, yeah, man. Um, well, once my kid is born, I have all this stuff that I need to be able to keep track of, and you know, I'm not very trusting um, of the whole industry and how they keep data private, just because I come from the marketing background and I've worked with banks and I've worked with, you know, a lot of these people with this very private data, you know, and they're sending it over to me kind of like, like, like no questions asked, you know, I'm not signing NDAs. I'm not doing any of the stuff that you would expect. So, I mean, automatically I'm like, wow, dude, is this how my data is being passed around just like this easily? And, uh, you know, the more you dig into it, I went on this website or I found this website, have I been pwned.com, something I kind of always reference, but it, you type in your email and then, um, it'll tell you all the data breaches that your email has been associated with. And, um, I sure enough typed, I have about 20 different emails for different companies and different little things. And, um, uh, yeah, most of them had had data breaches. Uh, so yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was kind of eye opening. And, um, so I didn't really, it wasn't very trusting of where to put the data, where to host all this stuff. I know that, you know, myself, luckily, you know, I have my fiance and she's really organized, but myself, dude, I, I don't keep track of that kind of stuff. Um, which is why also in a, in every venture that I am, you know, take part in, I make sure that, I have somebody very close to me who's very organized because I like like shooting at the hip and really just going and, and tackling problems and doing things. And I leave a trail of paperwork behind me. Um, and um, so like with, with DocuShield, I have Kalina, who is um, my admin or, you know, the, the admin with the restaurant. And she's just been amazing. And the restaurant industry is just there's so many vendors and um there's product um cost and everything to keep track of and she does an amazing job so naturally you know um she came on board with me here on DocuShield and is handling all that administrative stuff that I am um not the best at but anyway so DocuShield was born out of that that idea that I need somewhere for all of this stuff to be placed that's secured that nobody else has access to. Lo and behold, I do all the research and it's no such a thing, right? So start thinking of how to piece it together myself. Naturally, as you know, somebody who's always trying to build a solution, um, it's like, okay, cool, what can we do? And um, Web3 came to mind and, you know, access NFTs and all of this different stuff. And there was probably about 50 different drawouts of the architecture before I was really happy with where DocuShield is now. So DocuShield is a, right now it's a mobile app. Um, it's Android and iOS based. And um, it's really geared towards onboarding people into Web3 without really having them to, to need to know anything about Web3. All they need to know is we're keeping their documents more secure than anybody else out there. And um, if they wanna know more, it's gonna be a great opportunity for us to you know expand on that knowledge Kind of like Coinbase does, you know, you go on the app and then you start, you know, buying Bitcoin or whatever, but then they hit you with these little tidbits. It's like, oh, hey, like, you know, um, did you know this about Ethereum or did you know this about um, about what, you know, whatever coin there they're talking about at the time? I, I learned about a lot about a few coins. So um, you onboard these people, not by telling them from the get go about Web3, because, you know, they're like, oh, crypto, oh, blockchain. OK, cool. I've heard about it. But they don't want to like they know it's confusing. So we're we're creating the model to pretty much bring them on the way they're used to it. You can connect your social account so you can connect to Facebook. You can connect to Google. You can connect your Twitter and you can log in that way. Right. That's our basic account. And um, in the background, you do have a wallet. You know, so essentially it's a wallet solution, but um, they don't know that. They just know that they're going to come in here, upload their documents, and then those documents are going to essentially, you know, live up on the blockchain, you know, and uh, and be more secure. So really what happens, and then we also have the, sorry to skip around, but we also have the anonymous account. Um, and I can't hear you on Twitter again, just to, yeah, it's, but, I'm, I'm oh. just, I'm just being that guy. I gotta, I, <laughs> I want to make sure that it doesn't reverb. I keep forgetting. Oh, it. oh, it's that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm not. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, <laughs> I lost my chain of thought again, but, no, it's fine. uh, yeah, you so the anonymous, the, account uh, anonymous. Is, yeah, the anonymous yeah, the, accounts, I think the anonymous account is the, the basic crypto way to log in. So you, you download the, the app. 
and then it asks you, okay, create a password. After that, you get your 12 seed phrases and our, your 12 seed words, verify it, and boom. With the anonymous account, there's no way that we're going to be able to help you recover that. And we're pretty, pretty upfront. It's like, hey, you know, you know the risk with running this. Um, don't lose your seed phrase, right? Uh, with the basic account, there is a way for us to help them recover the password that gives them access to their account. So it's kind of created on on two different levels, the, the structure, but really it's because I know that I want to create a solution that my mom's going to be able to use. And I've tried to onboard her into crypto before and she's just not having it. So um, oh, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but she uh, she loves Facebook. And I know if I put a button right there where it says connect your Facebook, she's all about it. And, you know, I actually sent her the uh, the MVP that we have out right now. And, yeah, she's loving it. Dude. She's like, oh, my God, this is so great. But she loves everything I do. So, I mean, that's not the best gauge for how awesome the product is. But uh, still, I was pretty excited to show it to her and let her know, like, oh, yeah, this is like crypto based. This is Web3. Like, you see, that's your seed phrase, like right there. And um, so that's um, that's kind of how we're, we're approaching the global onboarding of people, um, just letting them know that uh, our marketing campaign is pretty much going to be where the evolution of document security, you know, and what really separates DocuShield is that with every other solution, somebody has master access to all of the data there. And that's usually how data breaches happen, you know, from people that are internally seeing the value of the data that they have and then exploiting that, you know, mostly for monetary gain. But even if like we broke into the servers or into the IPFS servers that are being hosted and we grabbed all the data, right? The way everything's set up is I would just get encrypted data. Like the only way that data is decrypted it is, is when it's in the wallet of the person that generated that are that that initial document upload and so you get an access nft that only gets decrypted with the link or the cid back to the ipfs network to recover those documents when it's in that wallet that the generating wallet essentially right so um yeah even if for some reason the network was to get hacked anything like that the only thing people would see is encrypted data and you know with aes 256 it hasn't been hacked in over 25 years or 20 years, something like that. I mean, it's been out. It's been the standard. Um, they call it military-grade encryption for a reason. It hasn't been broken. Yeah, and, you know, obviously you touched on quite a few points there for me. Uh, basically, <laughs> brings through my first, like, four questions. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. That's the way I like it. I don't have to ask them. They just get answered, you know? <laughs> but, no, um, in reality, just to talk on what you were, you know, that's kind of loosely how it would work, obviously. Right. There right. are ways for non-crypto people to get into it as well, which is awesome, you know? I think right. you, there's also – so how more so would – would like the payment structure side of it work as far mm -hmm. as like if I was someone with A, either crypto or B, mm -hmm. you know, fiat, how would I use your app? Is there, you know, how yeah. just explain that a little bit. A great question, man. And, you know, um, again, it comes back to like thinking, all right, how does my mom use technology? Because, you know, she is, she just, she loves the tech, but if something's too confusing for her, she's like not about it. Right. But one thing she's all about, you know, is is touch tunes, um, the jukebox player. Right. So when you have the touch tunes app and you want to play a song on the jukebox, you essentially like, oh, I want to play this song. They're like, cool. Here you go. Oh, wait a minute. It's two credits. And she's like, OK, cool. I'll put two credits in. She gives a credit card number and then boom, we're playing songs. So we're essentially going about it the same way. <clears throat> the doc token we're just going to be referring to is credits. Right. So here is a block of credits. And when you attempt to upload the document, it's going to say, OK, cool. This is going to take 0 0.02 of a doc token to secure. And then it'll say here, you want to buy ten dollars worth of doc. $20 worth of doc or 50, 100. We'll give a few different options. And then you'll just buy a block of these tokens. And as you upload, it's going to chip away at the balance. It's going to tell you, okay, to secure this, it's going to cost this much. Um, so we're going to deduct it from your balance. And the same thing, you know, just like TouchTunes uh, app or any really credit serve, any service that offers credits. Um, once you're done, it'll say, hey, you're out. Would you like to refuel um, your account or not? 
And, um, you know, so that eliminates the pay, uh, the, the membership service, which, which is something I hate because I've been at points in my life where I can't, I have to pick and choose which service I'm going to cut and which service I'm going to keep access to. I mean, it's just a reality for myself and for a lot, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people out there, you know, things happen and you have to cut expenses. So I don't, I don't ever want to be at the point where I'm cutting people off from the documents that they're securing with us just because they can't afford some monthly payment that we set. So that's really clutch to me is being able to have a pay as you go type of model and still be profitable. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, I guess that kind of leads into, is there going to be uh, utility for the people that want to hold the doc or like buy and trade doc? What, uh, you know, is there going to be like, I obviously know as of right now, not right now, but will there be anything that you've thought of like staking for a portion of fees or something like that yeah. for the holders yeah. of the token? You know, absolutely, man. So, um, there, you want to have provide as much utility as possible uh, with any anything you create, right? So, um, obviously, the first answer is I'm going to be utilizing it for the software, you know, paying for document uploads. Um, the next thing is going to be um, our node operations or so being a part of the IPFS community that is supporting this whole kind of structure of the application. So if you want to come in and there's also going to be a, a no staking barrier to entrance, but let's just say you want to come in and you want to gain some APR by running an instance of I IPFS, right? And you can do that on a virtual machine. You can do that on a containerized instance, or you can do that on a little dedicated server that you have. But um, <clears throat> to be able to get those larger rewards in like a tiered system, you're going to stake your doc token. And as long as that's locked up, you're going to be earning rewards very similar to the way the flux nodes um, operates you know the higher tier you get and the better your system is the more rewards that uh you're going to pull in and then also uh so now building out the doc application the, the docu shield application i mean we're pretty much i mean we're at our mvp we're at a point where i feel like we're a, a little over halfway there right as far as getting the whole thing built out um, the infrastructure with the IPFS is next. Uh, well, with the private IPFS, right now we're just using public for our MVP. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we keep hearing of these different these different use cases, like, does your app do, like, do this or is it going to do this? And they're all geared around privacy, right? They're all geared around security. And so it really opened up this broader picture of like, wow, man, there's so many things that people are concerned with as far as security goes. The doc, the DocuShield app is going to be very laser pointed towards one solution, right? Uh, because that's how you onboard people, make something easy. But, you know, after seeing all these needs, it started us putting together this uh this what i'm calling the mothership but it's really the backbone of an infrastructure right that um is going to look at all these different use cases and um have a platform to build them on so uh we're going to build a bunch of microservices that that create um access for different you know for different utility that people are going to want to um build upon and each of those microservices is going to have apis behind them and essentially you're going to be able to build um, we're going to drop out SDKs and people are going to be able to build um, different plugins and different apps to all kind of intertwine in this bigger ecosystem that that we built. So if you have an idea for a privacy app, you know, and um, you can come right here, you know, uh, get access to the SDK and then build to integrate into the doc ecosystem and, um, you know, offer that on our marketplace. So node operations is the first thing that we're building in this marketplace. So uh, we want to provide a nice graphical user interface to um, be able to just pretty much boost an instance of an IPFS server on Linode or on AWS or hopefully on Flux or even on your home computer and just make it simple. You know what I mean? And so that's how right now we're developing this infrastructure to support our first plugin, which is Node Ops. And then after that, we have a whole list of things that we're doing. And all of these, um, all of these plugins and all of these things that are going to be added on are going to utilize the doc token. Um, decentralized email is something that we've also been working on. Just like we kind of work on things as they pop up. And, you know, we've, we put out an email server. Like I, I hosted an email server on our VPS. And I was just like, hey, get these Kadena based emails. It's going to help us bootstrap the program or, you know, the development. And it did. The people that, that came in and bought those, those emails, um, 
they really have helped, you know, us to keep developing. Um, but um, anyway, so we're decentralizing that by hosting it on Flux. And we're also going to be implementing where you can come in and if you stake the doc token, then you don't have to pay for the email. Like it's it's available to you. If you don't want to stake doc, you can just pay right up front for that email like any other service. So, yeah, the doc utility is going to be ever expanding um, on the backbone of this infrastructure. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that kind of leads into, you know, obviously you're running on Flux um, uh, as well. You know, I know that Flux has that kind of structure, like I've talked about it with uh, a couple other, um, you know, startups or what you want to call them that are also going to be running on Flux. And I think you kind of answered it anyways, that it's a yes, but people will be able to then run in reality, dock specific nodes. If they just want to support your network, they will be able to do that, right? For a bigger piece of the pie, so to speak, right? It's essentially, man. So we're going to be running our whole infrastructure on Flux. Like that's going to be decentralization at its core. And I mean, the dudes at Flux have just been amazing with us and literally answer any question I got within the span of like an hour or two, which is in the global crypto space. I mean, that's 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 lightning fast because you never know when people are sleeping or when they're not and everybody's world. I've heard many good things from projects <laughs> of all sizes from yeah. interacting with Flux. So it's yeah, been, they, it's been they, amazing, uh, man. pretty amazing guys for sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, so so that's, I mean, that's obviously awesome, you know, and, and being able to have really like, you know, the freedom of Flux is actually really nice being able as yeah. a node operator, you know, most node operators, you're picking a coin and that's that, right? Where Flux right. is not right. like that whatsoever. So it's, it's nice that, you know, even if someone isn't too keen on like Flux as a coin, well, they can still just support you via their node yeah. systems, right? So, yeah. so that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And that kind of led into my, uh, you know, for the future, will there ever be any business to business slash enterprise features, which I think basically you answered as a yes as well, that you really yeah. want to help not only just onboard users, but onboard developers into the privacy sector on blockchain, mm-hmm. which is really cool, especially for your holders out there you know <laughs> and the crazy thing about that man is like as soon as we kind of like started picking up traction, you know um companies that they've just been hitting me up and being like, Hey, like if I give you, if I give you 200,000 right now, how soon can we have this product available for me? And I'm like, Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Like, uh, I'm, we're building it right now still for people. Like give us, and this has happened like multiple times where companies will just approach and be like, I want this for us. Like, here you go. Um, how much do you need? What can we do? And really it's like, um, I mean, so that's, that's a big need inside of, inside of the B2B industry. And um, definitely, um, you know, that's going to be what kind of also triggered doing the infrastructure thing is we're going to be able to to tie in these enterprise solutions and um, bring them on. And if somebody has a small business, you know, or not like a huge, you know, uh, corporation and they still want to use it, they can go to whatever solution we're developing. We can go to the app store. They can uh, plug that in. They can get that plug in and, you know, tie it to their account. And now they'll have access to this feature that's been built. And um, again, we we want to revolve all this stuff um, around usage of the doc token, you know. Nice. And now I've heard you mention the, the MVP, I think, which is probably like your beta or alpha kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's the is, alpha version, essentially. So from... is, is the app out already? And can people kind of mess around with it? Or is there like a beta coming or something like that? Yeah, possibly? yeah, man. Or... So we, we've done, right now we're in the middle of doing our private group testing, which has been going pretty well. Um, and um Yeah, I think right after this, I'm just going to like really make it public. I was worried about kind of, you know, the feedback and, you know, anything you do, you're, I mean, you're your own worst critic, you know, it's like, and and I love what we have out so far, but then I'm like, oh, well, what kind of backlash are we going to get for this? Because I made this decision with the UI, like what's going to happen? Are people going to hate it? But, you know, at this point, like we've been getting good feedback and, you know, I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with it. That's going to take us until the end of the week. And then we're supposed to do another round of testing with the APK. But, you know, yesterday I had a um, an AMA with the Turkish community and I kind of just, um, you know, let people try it out. And I think we're going to do the same thing um, as a whole with everybody. And that's just to get their honest feedback. I'm not really... 
I'm not really too worried about any real, real backlash or anything right now because what's available is available. You can secure a document. Um, the wallet application works. Like, you know, there are things like sharing a document that we haven't yet gotten to uh that would that would require us using like a, a burning mechanism with an nft like if i wanted to send you a um a document but I, or you know prove that i am who i am by sending you my id uh, but i only wanted you to be able to see it once or maybe twice or whatever you'll be able to say then we're gonna have to build the logic and that says okay after um two views or after a download or whatever, then this NFT dissipates or it burns. Um, so you no longer have access to that document. So something like that, we have not yet built yet. And, you know, getting even into that, man, Marmalade has been difficult to kind of work through. Not because I'm not, I'm not talking anything about the coding, but there's not, there's no comments or anything to really go off when you look inside of the, uh, the GitHub. So, I mean, it's, it's just like, dude, I get, I get, it's like, it's a surefire way to get a headache. Um, trying to, trying to go in and, uh, you know, really hack away at this and understand it. And, um, you know, luckily, you know, I've been getting some help too by people that are way smarter than me, um, to, to really, you know, look at this and people that are really, um, versed in, in Haskell and, you know, um, the, the language that Pact was written in. Um, so, I mean, that's been a huge help, you know, being able to get some feedback and insight on their end. And even on their end, it's it's like um, they're expressing some frustrations and it's mostly just because no commenting on anything. You know, it's like we're seeing, OK, this is supposed to perform this, but how is everything interacting, you know? Um, and so. Yeah, so so doing something like a burning mechanism with an NFT, like I'm trying to get the wallet to hold it right now. But doing something like a burning mechanism is is uh frustrating. Yeah, it's gonna be yeah, even leagues more. So we're waiting for a new commit to come on to Marmalade, hopefully soon. Um, so if uh when this drops, if you guys want to tag Kadena dot um underscore IO, I mean please, I mean, we're all waiting. I know there's a lot of NFT projects out there. That are that are waiting and i know that there's people out there that are putting out nfts like kitty cat and stuff but they're doing it with their own flavor and twists you know um because these are just ingenious dudes that are <laughs> that are taking over and saying you know what if i can't see it i'm gonna do it like <clears throat> but um you know for the rest of us it would be really nice to get another commit that would um include some commenting and some a little further direction yeah, and I think, uh, you know, as yourself with obvious, you know, NFT aspects built into mm -hmm. how the app is going to work, it's something that I know the communities have been looking for and just me right. myself being, uh, well, at least with, you know, my brief stint with Luna, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was kind of trying to be a, you know, a, 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 a bridge between the right. two communities and mm -hmm. that was a big thing was it's developers coming into pact or like where do i find stuff you know and it, it's, yeah. it's it's something i've heard a lot of i've seen a lot of and i know that the teams are definitely you know like i i literally forwarded uh something to sefi and svarna to like mm -hmm. Hugely big brain people that do all the blockchain blockchain <laughs> yeah. wizardry stuff and just understand it a lot more than I do. But I think it was blockchain Doug was actually mentioning that they're looking for like a technical analyst basically that will uh, be doing those things and being that person that's willing whoa. to just talk about the technical side of things <laughs> and send it out to people because right now it's they're kind of at a manpower thing, right? Like they're focused. Yeah, yeah innovation and launching stuff and not sure. really trying to explain it right <laughs> you know you know like, the funny like, thing uh, is it's like but we need explanations <laughs> but, but no, it is. no that's i'm hiring somebody right now i'm in the process of, of of doing it of just onboarding a straight haskell expert you know that is it's hard to find as well to just really like this dude's job is going to be to make sense of all this code so that you know behind packed in a way that's going to be a little easier for new devs to read that way when they you know when they operate with the smart contracts and stuff that are going to be the backbone of our infrastructure that it's easier for them because i mean we don't want to make it difficult you know for them 
them to create a contract. So yeah, man. I mean, if they're not doing it, like I'm, I already, I'm not, I'm not really relying on them. That's why I'm gonna onboard. Um, you know, and I've interviewed quite a few people for this uh, position, but I'm, we're gonna onboard just a, our straight Haskell person, man, and that's gonna be the guy to break everything down because I mean, Haskell is a language that Patch was written in for, for people that are kind of new. Um, and trust, I don't really know how all of this stuff works. I know a high level of uh, enough about everything, and it's pretty much just enough to really cause some damage and, and put myself in danger. <laughs> but, you know, you surround yourself with these with these amazingly smart people and um you know i pretty much tell them like hey man you're here because you have this amazing skill and you understand this and this is what we're trying to do so by all means break it down to me in a way that i can understand give me as much info as i can and you know and we'll sync up and make sure everything's going well and it's you know it's great so by no means am i programming all this stuff like the vision and the architecture yeah but i mean the the the, the details and all that stuff man i have have a great uh group of really smart guys and we're looking to add to that right now well it's 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 something as we've been saying that the the definitely the ecosystem of cadena needs and it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's like we need it prior to a lot of the things they're planning you know it's like we don't right. want to open up like ibc <laughs> or like chain link or whatever and yeah. then have all these this plethora of people to you know showcase mm -hmm. ourselves to and then have them all be like hey eh? And just yeah. go to the next easy, you know, solidity or whatever EVM compatible, you know, thing, right? And so it's, it's yeah, it's whoever, you know, does it. And uh -huh. I'm, I'm sure there's a few people trying to do it. They will sure. get high praise for sure uh -huh. from, from the community. So, so yeah. it's definitely something and it's amazing that you guys are looking and doing that, you know, by yourselves, right? You're not, and you're not waiting around. And, and I think that's something that I also enjoy just about, you know, the Kadena ecosystem as well. And the devs behind Kadena is they're all really chomping at the bit as well to right. be those quote unquote pioneers and really do something that maybe everybody else isn't doing, you know? And it's like, we have these things and it's, you know, we've been enlightened to the fact that it's, we're just waiting for all these yeah. other people, right? And for some people, which I understand, when when you know how to make a smart contract, when you know how to launch an NFT project on Solidity and you have to relearn that, well, that's exactly. extra work. It's like, I understand mm -hmm. why you might not jump at the chance to do that, right? Yeah. But, you know, it's things like that and really the onboarding, not only of just, you know, users to an app or a specific project, but really the right. onboarding that that we do need in, in the ecosystem as well. So it's, exactly. it's just nice to see that projects are realizing that, cool. which obviously projects need the audience to, uh, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> to cater well, to. to so. Kind of check this out, man. I mean, Cosmos has been supporting Pact for, what, a couple of years now. And who on Cosmos, on, on any of their amazingly successful blockchains, who on Cosmos is built with Pact? I don't think, I couldn't name one, you know, like, um, and it's, the support's there, but, you know, if, if you don't have, if you don't make it easy to onboard people, and that's one thing that we're super focused on is onboarding the, the next wave of crypto adoption, you know, um, you have to make it easy, man. Like we understand these are a bunch of smart people that are building this, but if they're not making it easy for us, then it's just going to stay very cool to a bunch of really smart people. And I'm going to be here kind of like, well, I, it sounds really cool, but how do I do it? <laughs> you know? Um, so that's, I think where the yeah, kind of, sure the kind of separation lies right now, man. And um, we definitely are aiming towards bridging that and do not to take all the credit either at all, because, um, you know, Steven over at, uh, at Kadena bet or KDA bet, he's a, a Haskell, he's a Haskell pro and he's been diving in and trying to help me out as well. And, you know, just make sense of everything. And I mean, this, this is like, this dude knows his stuff. Like he is um, very intelligent. We just had a space with him. You guys can check it out on our YouTube. Um, if you want to go back, we posted up the space but um anyway yeah man and and you know he's expressing these frustrations too so i mean it kind of like makes me feel better because a lot of times when i when i'm reading it i just feel stupid <laughs> and like you know so having somebody that is an absolute you know pro and and knows what he's talking about also have some similar frustrations obviously he's getting further than my than myself but having some similar frustrations it's kind of like okay well there is really an underlying problem here that we need to solve
Yeah, it's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I mean, I was going to say, like, I feel like I'm trying to see of what other questions are specific to you. The app necessarily as far as, um, well, I guess actually one highlight that I really want to make is your tokenomics, you know, like you guys have zero team tokens, I think, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> basically, basically zero, you know, yeah, pretty much zero, or, um, dude. you know, and then how, uh, how does the structure work as far as, you know, obviously you've got your IDO coming up, how mm-hmm. many tokens are going to be available at launch and so on, uh, you know, explain your tokenomics a little bit if you can. Yeah, yeah, and I do get a lot of people just coming at me crazy, like directly and they're like, well, if you have no tokens, how do I know that you're not going to leave? And how do we know that this is net? And it makes sense, dude. So the first thing is like, I didn't want people to worry about us dumping tokens, right? And the second thing is that we are strictly focused on the um, making this app um, profitable from a from a from not only the token standpoint but as a company right and so you know everybody on my team i'm paying so it's not like they're working for tokens or anything or they're relying on this it's like no man we're doing a job we're gonna provide this service and um that's our goal you know we really want the full benefit of the token going uh going up in price or whatever it is to be with you know, the, um, to be with the community. And that being said, man, I'm definitely going to be DCA into my own token, like for sure, but I'm not going to allocate, you know, some to myself just for the hell of it. And again, like people say, Oh, well, how do, you know, whatever, if you don't want to believe that we're going to be here, I'm not going anywhere. But I mean, I don't think that when I see that, you know, uh, other, other teams doing that, it doesn't really provide any more security for me. It's like, if they're going to sell for $50 billion, they don't care how many tokens they're leaving behind. Like they're our 50 billion, you know, they're going to take that fiat and they're going to bounce. So it's kind of like, uh, no smoke and mirrors, man. This is how it's going. And, um, you know, um, yeah, we're not, we're not waiting for tokens to unlock or, or anything like that. We're building a product. We're going to keep building a product. We're going to make a successful company. And that's our goal, you know? So uh, the tokenomics there, um, uh, so there's going to be a billion uh, doc tokens that are released over the span of 10 years, right? Um, and half of that is going to be in circulation in the beginning, but not really in circulation because a lot of it is um, is going to go towards liquidity. It's going to go towards um, partnerships and really bootstrapping the network, right? So for each private network to run, we're doing three different private networks um, on IPFS. It requires at least six people to run functionally, right? At least at the bare minimum. So we're looking for people in the... Um, in the community mostly like other projects and you know people who have been around for a while to um it's it's like we're gonna say here take these tokens stake them down and we'll do a multi-sig right stake them down and stake them there for five years and you can have them but lock them down for five years so that i know that we have this this node right here or this IPFS instance to really um, rely upon, you know? And so that's what a big chunk of the tokens are going to be too, is just throwing them out there for people in the community or other projects to run these nodes, be able to benefit from the rewards that they're giving. But also that gives us the security of saying, all right, cool. I at least know that we have all our bases covered and um, we got enough people out there supporting the network to, to be able to move forward with that. Um, and I have an article um, up on Medium that has all of the tokenomics. Um, you know, I don't really want to waste. I mean, I blabber so much, dude. I'll be here for an hour talking straight on the tokenomics and everything. Oh, you know? Yeah, no, no, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, there are, there is, you know, uh, uh, and your guys' white paper is super great and in depth yeah. for anyone who's looking on info. Um, yeah, definitely go Thank check you. out their link tree and they've got their white paper and their Medium on there, which they've done great things with. Um, yeah, so I guess to kind of move into what is coming up, uh, the IDO, um, how many tokens? I think it says here it's 100 million for the IDO. 100, 140 or? million are available in the IDO, and they're starting at a price of under a penny. It's 0.00714 cents. And okay. uh, good luck for do me. You know, my area code 714. So okay. yeah. <laughs> um, do you, so uh, to touch on that now, what um, do you know roughly how much allocation people are going to be able to buy uh, yeah. as far as that? Yeah. So whitelist is going to be uh, $400 USD 
maximum allocation, and we have about 250 whitelists out there. So um, that's about 10% of all that's available. And then there's the KDL round, uh, where I think the max um, is about, I think it's 1,200 as well. And then 1,250 is the fair distribution, uh, where everybody just goes in, and your maximum amount is going to be 1,250 USD that you can... um, that you can buy worth of doc token. Now, after that, um, to kind of cover what's going to happen after that, the um, they're going to be staked for a course of of approximately three months. At the very latest, they're going to be unstaked or released on October first. But really, um, that's leading into our second IDO. So um, we're going to have two IDOs. This first one, which in the meantime, in between the two, you're going to be staking uh, at a at a rewards rate of twelve percent. Right. And then um, after the second IDO is when the tokens are going to be completely released. So the first IDO is going to be to finish up the product, you know, to just get uh, the app completely up, ready to go, functional and um, living on the Kadena blockchain. And also um, bootstrapping that infrastructure that we're building and um, getting that pretty much settled down. The second IDO is going to also be a low cap IDO. And um it's going to be really geared towards marketing. Now, um, you know, when we're competing with big boys in the W2 space, like Dropbox, their marketing over the course of a year is about as big as the entire market cap of Kadena. Like if you say it's probably large, (laughs) I would imagine for sure. It, It about eats up our entire market cap here. So, I mean, (laughs) so, I mean, that's, that's crazy, but you know, I mean, you got to be creative as a marketer and as an underdog. And I think that's something that we um, that we are, you know, really geared towards is guerrilla marketing and just getting the word out there through word of mouth. You know, that's the best way to grow anything um, through word of mouth from trusted people that, you know, and love, you know. So, yeah, man, um, just getting it out there first to our community and trying to roll through it and be really smart with the money that we are raising, because by no means are we raising, you know, like millions and millions like now nah, we're going to. We're going to keep it low. That way, the, the low market cap, it works better for our investors when, when you know, things do start to pick up traction. There's a lot of room to, to grow and to build, you know. So we definitely want to leave it low. And so after that, so the, the next idea is going to come. Um, and no matter what, I mean, it's going to come within three months. And no matter what, like I'm saying, October 1st, those tokens are being released. If whether we're in the middle of another second IDO or whatever the case may be, I don't want people waiting. I know that, you know, in crypto, in the crypto world, that's all that's that's it can be that could feel like years and years away. October 1st, you know, so um, so that's our that's our date at the absolute latest. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, there'll be a second raise where the price will be a little bit higher. And um yeah, that'll get us into our final, you know, stage where we're just operating and running and we'll have our enterprise suite that we're growing and just, I mean, full on and full force from there. Yeah. And so I guess uh, um, one of my questions was how soon after the IDO will it be available on a DEX? So it'll probably not be available after this one. It'll be the second not IDO after or? Yeah, yeah, right. So... Immediately, immediately after the second IDO or... October 1st, whichever one comes first, whichever one comes first. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So this is very much so definitely just a, a, an initial like, you know, funding run basically. And all those people are going to be your early investors for sure. So to speak, right? Yeah, and it's not just like a hundred percent, you know, seed. Like we're we're there. We have an app that I do. I'm gonna put in people's hands, like you know, pretty much now, dude. Because I want people to see that, like, we're not playing around. Like we're building this, and trust it's come out of pocket right now. And you know, through the love of some of the developers that are giving me a great rate, you know, to just help because they they love working with it too. So I mean, we're really shoestringing this thing together right now, and I think we've gotten we've gotten amazingly far, dude. And that's just my team has been killing it and i couldn't i don't have anything but the most the most respect and praise to give them really yeah that's awesome i think sorry you did touch uh on the one thing as well um which uh i was just going to ask about what coins you need obviously the idea is taking place on katie launch uh for those that don't know 
Um, KD Launch does have a KYC. You only have to apply for the KYC once, though. So if you've already taken part in an IDO or signed up on KD Launch, you are good to go with the KYC. Um, just explain what will the registration kind of look like? How many days do people have and uh, for yeah. each round, I guess I should say? Yeah, so registration opens today. And today is Friday, uh, May 27th. And it ends um, in, I believe, four days. Let me, let me get my little calendar up right here real quick. Um, I have it all on the calendar. So <clears throat> there we go. Starts today on the 27th. Um, and then we go live with the whitelist round on June 1st, the KDL round for the people that are staking uh, KDL. Uh, that is going to be the next day on the second. And then the fair distribution round, like for the rest of us, is going to be on the fourth um, of uh, June. So, now, I mean, right uh, now you got one, two, three, four, about five days to sign up, get KYC. I mean, getting KYC doesn't take very long. I know because I, I signed up and failed because I'm from the U.S., but still, you know, I had to go through it. Uh, that way, everybody has my info and stuff. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sorry to you know, so, US people. Um, yeah, so I guess if anything, um, what was I going to say? Oh, the fair distribution round, is that only KDL or are you going to be able to buy with KDA through KD Launch? No, yeah, yeah. You, you buy through KD, you can buy with KDA. And, um, yeah, okay. I, I couldn't remember if they did it on all of theirs or not. I thought they did, but yeah, I was just curious about that. So it'll be the KDL round for the KDL stakers folk right. kind of thing. And then, you know, and then previous or sorry, after that, it'll be KDA or KDL fair distribution kind of thing. Exactly, right. Sweet, sweet. Well, I mean, in all reality, I would say um, we've kind of touched on a lot, I would say. We're yeah. running up on almost an hour here, so I would <laughs> say that if anyone in the crowd or the audience right now um, has any questions or comments or anything, feel free to uh, uh, request to speak, and by any means, you can come up and uh, ask uh, DocuShield a question here. Um, if anything, all I'd ask is that please keep it, you know, pertaining to uh, DocuShield and, and uh, what we've been chatting about. Uh, put your hand up if we're speaking, if I pull you up, and we'll, we'll get to you as soon as we can. Uh, I know we got uh, Kadena Life popping up here real quick, so we'll bring them up. Um, doo -doo -doo. And we got Mining Club, I think. So, doo -doo -doo. Oh. All right. So, yeah, uh, I brought you guys up. I'd say Kadena Life, feel free. Welcome, as always. And, uh, yeah, yeah, see what you um, got to say. Well, uh, thanks for, for putting me up here. I just uh, wanted to say that, you know, listening to – is it Adrian on, from Dr. Shield? I didn't get your name. Yeah, yeah, Adrian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. No, it just, uh, I just love to hear the fact that, you know, there's so many risk takers. And I love, I love the backstories of this stuff and the fact that, you know, I – hear you what happened with the pandemic or the restaurant all this stuff just fascinating to me that we have so many so many of these entrepreneurial spirits jumping in and taking risks and i just thought that was awesome and secondly the seven four, that's thank you orange thank county, you right are you are you, you know are you, yeah orange yeah, orange we, county well, we used to be neighbors before i i lived in manhattan beach sort of neighbors you know before I oh started, okay I right on man hell yeah. yeah but uh <laughs> but anyways, we were, uh, so 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 yeah, man. Uh, if I ever go back, I have to go to your restaurant, man. And I, I want to say, dude, please do. Uh, hell yeah, anybody out there? It's OC. Swing on by, man. Next round, bar and grill. Awesome, man. Uh, good luck with the idea, man. It sounds yeah. awesome. Everything sounds really cool. What you guys are doing, and and I'm really looking forward to seeing how this project develops, man. So good luck. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Hey everybody, uh, Cameron. Thanks for having, thanks for hosting and, and getting me up here. Um, just want to say congratulations, Adrian, and and best of luck to DocuShield. One of my thanks, favorite man. project projects. Um, I love the fact that you know you don't have to use Kadena or know what Kadena is to to make use of DocuShield. It's so cool. Um, I'm kind of a, un unfortunate I can't participate in the IDO, but yeah, I'm sure I'll be buying in uh, sooner yeah. rather than later. 
Absolutely, man. And we'd love for you guys to help us by running an IPFS instance. And, you know, we'll talk about that off offline. But, you know, I mean, yeah, we're a big fan of what you guys are doing too, man. And, you know, it's always a pleasure talking to you, bro. Thank you. Absolutely. Best of luck, man. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for stopping by there, guys, as well. Uh, I guess we've got uh, Rob, Rob there, Rob Hodling. Uh, feel free, welcome. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions. Thanks, Cameron. Um, yeah, big what's up to Adrian at Ducky Shield. You might know me as PC Man, the first member on the. Uh, hey, the yo, yeah, what's up, man? The Olympics. Olympics. <laughs> hey, yeah, brother. Thank you, man. Hell yeah, representing. <laughs> yeah, I'm in there, man. Hopefully, we win it, you know. you know. Oh, that's right. Thing. That's um, right. I've been enjoying all of the AMAs you guys have been having recently. It's been great to see all of the innovation across the Kadena ecosystem. I'm so excited for it. Definitely jumping into the IDO. Um, but I had a question about um, future products or services, right? Um, yeah. I'm sure you've heard of the company Proton, the guys behind Proton Mail, and they've got a VPN. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, huh? <laughs> I just found out today there was an article in Wired magazine um, with the founder, mm -hmm. and he was saying they're planning to expand and they're going to do like a calendar app and they're going to do mm -hmm. uh, like a file storage kind of solution. And I was thinking, oh, sounds like they're kind of coming into DocuShield kind of territory. Yeah, and yeah. The question is, uh, do you guys have any future plans for, for making more apps, like maybe a VPN uh, uh, solution as well yourselves? Um, and do you see yeah. Proton like, uh, a competitor to yourselves? Uh, you know, um, so for the first thing, yeah, the whole reason we're building the infrastructure to kind of answer the first question is to be able to make use of, of all of these different applications um, on a security, you know, basis. So like the node management and all that stuff is going to be a plug-in. Um, you know, we have uh, the, the email service. It's going to be a plug-in. Um, and, you know, I have a whole list, actually. They, I, I shut down everything on my computer uh, right now. That way it doesn't interfere with uh, the, the recording we're doing. But um, I'll, I'll make that list out public of what we're going to be working on. But do I see them as direct competition? Like, not really, man. Like, I mean, Proton Mail is cool and all that stuff. But if I don't, if I, if I just sign up for the free version there, like, I get ads, man. And those ads I know are tailored towards me. So, I mean, not to throw any shade or anything about what they're doing, but I mean, I don't know. We're not going to be doing that kind of stuff, man. Like, we're not going to be putting ads out there for people. And I mean, the way they're creepily, like, super geared towards me i mean kind of makes me wonder like what's going on in the background man um so i mean not nah, did, also... did they pwn you yeah did they pwn me bro like i've been pwned so many times what the hell like you fall for it no um so no and we're involved in the community man the the whole thing about us is like for us to work we really need you guys to be there and helping us, you know, um, get this whole network built. IPFS is a community, it's a community driv driven project and us putting up, you know, private versions of IPFS means that we really need to get our community like, you know, here really, really, you know, going. So, I mean, I don't see them as direct, as direct competition, really. They got their own thing going. Um, and it's cool. You know, like I said, I'm a pro I'm a, I'm a mail owner for proton mail, but I think there's enough room for us both to be there and doing our thing and approach it in in our own unique ways yeah and i don't want to i don't want to put words in anybody's mouth or make deals that are made but i feel like timpy being around and you guys yeah. being both cadena projects in the future uh -huh could easily team up on a lot of these things and as the you know data procurer and the data secure you know really yeah, it's yeah. all on flux and everything and it's like the the companies i guess this is a a, a nod to katie launch but like the the projects they're bringing as along with you guys and everything like they're really mm -hmm. awesome projects and i think yeah. they're they are the next wave of the really cool but really you know um what's the word i'm looking for uh needed i guess web yeah. three innovations like it's not like metaverse and blah blah blah, no, blah, blah. it's like no what real world use do we have right now that's just outdated you know that needs yeah. to get into the new world and it's even like you know you look at 
the the hacking style things that have happened over the past, you know, like two years with, you know, like chemical plants being hacked because some dude hit mm-hmm. a spooky link or, well, you know, just like well, yeah, yeah. stuff like that, where it's like, well, if they weren't running a nuclear plant on a computer from the eighties with, <laughs> you know, with zero security, you know, uh-huh. it's like maybe there'd be good things, you know, but Absolutely, it's even what man. you were saying about the whole end, NDA side of things, right? I know about NDAs. I've had to sign them for scripts and stuff in the acting world. And and it is, it's kind of a simple thing to think about, but uh, you don't realize what they are until you've ever signed one, you know? And it's yeah, like, well, yeah. oh, so this is how I protect my data? Because <laughs> you, know, <it's> like, <laughs> we know, yeah. you, you send something into oblivion and it's, it's over with, you know, like anyone exactly. can use it. So I really liked what you mentioned earlier about your, um, the possibility of doing like a, you know, a shared protected folder, but that it, you right. know, it goes poof after the fact, you know, right. that it's, exactly. you don't have to worry about an NDA because you know, that thing's gone, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So no, there's definitely, you know, and it's like, you think of something like an NDA or that, you know, pardon me, that agreement, mm-hmm. I guess that the, you know, X and Y party are making, that happens every single day, every single second in the business world. So again, I can understand that you would have businesses reaching out to you like, I need this right now because it gets rid of paper. It gets rid of costs, you know, and we're in a cost forward world these days. We're in a green forward world, you know, it's like, yeah. what about the people that will, or the businesses that will be able to be like, hey, Last year, we went through 20,000 kilograms of paper. This year, we've moved it all onto DocuShield. You know, right. <laughs> it's like, no, that's, it's like you, that's you know, cool. it's like the small things, but in the long term, you know, that can really make a stand, you know? So it's, yeah, it's awesome to see uh, happening either way. Absolutely. And quick shout out to Tempe, man. I mean, those guys have like answered like again, they're they're always open to working with us, to communicating with us, have have really like took us in under their wing. And um, you know, we're both undergoing some I some pretty serious IDO action right now, but we've already said like, hey, after all this is like settled, let's 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 get together and like work these two products together and find out how we can support each other. And even to like now, like, you know, they've been supporting every question that I've had. They've been answered to just like the nicest, smartest dudes in the space um, right there. And I'm super excited to be able to do more with them. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, uh, oh, thanks Rob. Appreciate on. it, man. And thanks for representing us in the uh, Olympics. You know, good luck to that, man. Uh, definitely be cheering y'all on. Appreciate it, brother. Sorry, I just tried bringing someone up as well that requested, but I don't know if it didn't that, work or not. Yeah, or, I've seen MGK. Yeah, I sent him another request. Feel free to come on up and say say hi or anything. We're we're at the that stage now. Um, Mock is coming up. It looks like, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, we got MGK up here. Um, Ooh, yeah, obviously yeah. trying to uh, trying trying. Oh, hey guys, what's up? What's oh. up, Cameron? No, yeah, welcome, welcome, Thank man. You. Yeah, we're just uh, just talking about Docu Shield and everything here. Feel free to say hi or ask a question, yeah. And, and yeah, Fantastic. welcome. Yeah, it sounds really cool. You mentioned earlier about uh, Flux. I've been learning about Flux and also Kadena and a um, uh, few things. Um, just wanted to check in, see if anybody is coming out to Austin for the upcoming industry events. And if so, I'm going to try to have a podcasting set and a video set up so we can uh, create some content, you know, for the ecosystem. So uh, reach out to me if you guys are uh, on board with that. And second of all, I was just wondering if somebody could give me kind of like a slightly above brief overview of the relationship between Flux and Kadena because I see it mentioned all the time, but I haven't fully understood it yet. Thanks. Yeah, I I, I would say, yeah. Yeah, I would say if anything, uh, Flux and Kadena have been, you know, very pronounced partners since the beginning and it's more just ideals you know cadena has been one of those companies from the beginning that have been multi-chain cross-chain and decentralized based and i think they just fit really well with flux and what flux is doing with zelcor and multi-chain and their node operations and, and really just everything i think it's more of like a you know, two peas in the same pod sort of deal more than anything. And then 
it's it's just a good combination for projects like DocuShield and, you know, all the projects really like, I mean, Mock here, like, I think basically every Kadena project Hello. is running <laughs> nodes on Flux pretty much. So, yeah. you know, it's just like, they just go together. You know, you've got the absolute, well, I shouldn't say absolute, but in our minds, the absolute best, you know, proof of work, blockchain, security backed then by the complete decentralized security of flux nodes so again i think it's just kind of like a very you know symbiotic partnership Ooh, big words <laughs> but yeah um but yeah so yeah either way thanks for coming in and as far as the podcast and and all that stuff any content in our community is much appreciated. We've mentioned it before that that's, you know, we, we do need to market these things and it's not always up to the company. You know, we have our communities, we have our projects that are pushing to do the same. So, I mean, feel free to mention in Kadena chats everywhere because you'll get reached out to for sure. And people will want to take part. Um, and yeah, thanks for popping up and thanks for saying hi and, and the questions. Um, we did, uh, no, you feel free. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying thanks and rock on. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Um, and then we did bring up mock and D five from, uh, mock, I should say. Hey, Hey, thanks for having us. Hey, everyone. Fantastic. How you guys, you fellas doing? Well, quite well. Adam, good. what about you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm very good as well. Just having awesome. a drink. I, I got to <laughs> nice. say three, three things to you guys. Okay, three things. The first one, okay, <laughs> is that we were supposed to be having Mock Friday just right now, but we delayed Mock Friday oh. for your sake, Adrian. Oh, actually, actually yeah. right before. Yeah, the second no, thing no. Is right before, yeah, for sure. right before we came on, I texted you saying hey man we're just about to have mock friday how about you join us so we can talk about your launch but turns out cameron beat, uh, beat us to it <laughs> yeah you stole adrian from us no oh, never dude nobody can steal me from you bro <laughs> oh, thank, no, thank you thank you and the second thing i wanted to say is that it's awesome seeing so many people that i love so much in Kadena and the uh, flux ecosystem over here really i love seeing all of us come back uh, come around right and always be in the same mm-hmm. spaces and the definitely. third thing and which is definitely the most important thing that I wanted to tell you guys is that we're going to fucking decimate you in the Olympics. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw uh, you guys have like 30 dude. people now. I saw you guys got like 25 it's people. I know, dude. It'll yeah. What did you massacre. mean? It's not a matter of numbers. Lucky strong. Matter of quality, right? Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. Quality. You you recruited like like the freaking like Israeli Israeli government, dude. You're like everybody has to serve in these Olympic games. <laughs> no, 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 man. Uh, listen, the Israelis, no. the, Israelis, the Israelis did not belong here. I got a friend in Korea, right? The place uh, where I was, I had him come along. He brought his entire team, his entire network. We're gonna decimate you guys. Oh honestly. man, hey, but we got Rob, dude. You don't got Rob's right here representing for us, so I'm not too concerned. Yeah, I, I Do you hear that Rob. dope? accent he had man i'm like i'm, I'm smooth just on that <laughs> <laughs> i love the talk i like it <laughs> <That's good. laughs> yeah. no it's gonna be fun though man it's definitely gonna be fun i'm not gonna be playing because i'm horrible and i'll only bring our number down but um you know um i'll be I watching have no idea sure. how that works the only thing i know is that we're gonna destroy everybody <laughs> and we have action ceo actually action is on our team Right. Oh There's yeah, so yeah, do that. That. yeah. So maybe, you, maybe you will, man. Don't try to, don't try to get in my head, though. <laughs> I like to try to get in your head. Right? <laughs> you, you're, I, you're, I, play, you're playing around with like these silly things, like having an IDO. Meanwhile, we do right. Matters, <laughs> which is Tetris. recruiting, baby. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Asteroids, baby. That's that's that that like hundred times speed asteroids game that they got is uh that's my jam right there. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, no, I, I, I messed up the times and I thought that I still had a day to sign up. So I missed the sign up for this one again. So I guess oh, I'm, no. I'm, I'll be a part of the third one. They said that it started on the 28th, but it ends on the 28th and it started on the 26th or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. We, we, got, we got a bit we, confused about that. Yeah, we, we did as well. We forgot to tweet yeah. about it. So we didn't yeah. even tell all of our community guys. Come yeah, to with the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. So quite, well, quite lucky we got as many people trying. To be honest, uh, we've not even announced any prizes or anything as well. So it's really, really cool to see as many people turn out to support us. It's like fantastic to see. Yeah, Absolutely. and basically we can have them support us without having to pay them anything. Yeah, I bribed. Oh, I, I bribed <laughs> people, and I still <laughs> no. I was like, it's not like that. I'll make, I'll make sure they get hooked up. I'll make sure that everyone gets a medal. I'll get hooked up. Adam, I was second. waiting for that. I was waiting for that backlash right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the the speculation yesterday and Kadena Bulls was rampant when we were in their space. Mining Club came in and they were like, "Your guys' team grew double overnight. What did you offer them?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. I will give out my kidney to win in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody wants that kidney, dude. We, <laughs> well, that's the, thing, the worst right? kidney on the market. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I don't know if you heard when I had asked, but we had talked about it yesterday, and they're going to be doing um, NFTs in the form of like first, second, and third. So there will be like nice. season-based gold, silver, and bronze awards and stuff. So <laughs> got to win the early ones, then you can be Michael Phelps in a couple there seasons. Go. With all your gold. <laughs> you, you know what they need to do? They got to make an NFT of a trash can. And Adrian, <laughs> I will present it to you myself because you're gonna lose so badly. I am gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a wallet with a couple trash cans, dude, in my face. <laughs> and I swear to God, that trash can will be worth more than all of the others. Right, than all the way. Just winning. for the symbolic gesture. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. I would never let it go. That'd be an NFT I'd never sell. <laughs> just a dumpster fire. It's just gotta be a dumpster yes, fire. <laughs> <laughs> A progressing oh, NFT. Once you get five trash cans, you have a dumpster fire now. There we go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Level up, baby. <laughs> get that le- get that legendary dumpster fire going. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I think me and Dorm um, over at Mock, we got a space tomorrow, right? Are we still on? What's happening tomorrow? Um, tomorrow see, I have to remind him. Saturday, I have to remind him every week. Right? Um, the the weekend, no, the week, just, the weekend roundup. We, we gotta establish a protocol. That's what yeah, I yeah. got him about yesterday. We gotta have uh, a protocol. Yeah, we have. Thing, so yeah, we got it in the calendar. If it's not in the yeah. calendar, it <laughs> it's on mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might, it might be, but. Yeah, but no, this is a new thing. Uh, he's just sort of like allocated me some responsibilities. So we apologize oh, if he, he got lost there. So, um, well, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll pick that up. So, 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 uh, so message Dart and we'll sign out. Uh, um, I'll message you, brother, and then I'll, I'll get on Dor's calendar. No, uh, don't message Dor. <laughs> message the guy who's message. responsible for collaborations <laughs> and community <laughs> engagement. <laughs> yeah, tr- drop me a message. I'll sign One way or another. I'll get you. <laughs> That's too good. Anyways, Adrian, are you excited? I'm excited, man. I'm excited and I'm super awesome. grateful, dude. This whole this whole thing has just been it's felt like like I won some kind of like, you know, sweepstakes or something, dude. Like I've never been, you know, this 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 fortunate to be able to have a community driven project like this and you know, so many people interested and and really like I couldn't be more more grateful to everybody who who's out there participating or not, just being a part of the community is has been it's been great, man. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, we just we just came on. We didn't mean to crash your your spaces. We just thought we'd come on and uh, congratulate oh, you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you 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 the registrations open down for your IPO. It's pretty it's pretty cool. It's good, it's good to see. No, thank you, man. Mock holds a special place in my heart for sure. Thank you, guys, Aww. man. No, <laughs> I, I guess that that leads into. Um, uh, I know. I think you guys just did one together, possibly. But is there for the people looking to get whitelists? Are there still going to be opportunities to get some whitelist giveaway, or is that <sighs> over? I think that's, or... that's over at this point. Yeah, I, I can't give away any anymore. Um, we hand the database over to um, to um, 
KDL, and I think we're we're pretty much set on that point. Awesome. Yeah, no, just yeah. wanted to make sure. Um, oh, so, yeah. yeah, so for the people really wanting to take part in the IDO, you know, get onto the registration. And by the mm-hmm. sounds of it, you mentioned earlier that only like 10% of the available is going to it, take it's like this. So, exactly. so it sounds like it's going to be a pretty fair launch and you'll have plenty of opportunity. Um, there is, uh, we just said like four or five days to make it to the fair launch. So yeah, you have like four days kind of minimum maximum to sign Uh up for the IDO. Um, So yeah, I mean, obviously we should let mock get to their space. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. But but yeah, no, I, I, Adrian, if if you want to say anything else, I mean, I'm done with all my questions and stuff. Uh, Feel free to, you know, speak your piece. Sure, man. I just I want to, again, give a, a quick thank you to everybody, um, you know, who has been um, very welcoming of us. Got a lot of stuff in the works, and, man, we're just ready to pick this up into full gear. Um, something kind of exciting that we got in the works that's going to probably come sooner than I thought is um, started play- playing around with, like, the Raspberry Pi 4s and hosting um, IPFS on that and then connecting to networks and stuff. And it looks like we're going to be able to put together and piece together some, um, some miners that are going to be able to run IPFS and connect to our private networks. So that's also something exciting that we're, that we're looking into. And, you know, we're just going to in-house piece them together and then just kind of shoot them out to the community. And we'll see, you know, where things go from there, but we want to make things easy for everybody to participate because we're really relying on y'all to, um, to really help us out there. And then just being able to play with all this cool tech. And I mean, stuff that we can do now with a raspberry Pi, man, it's, it's crazy. I may be a little late to the fiesta with with Raspberry Pi, but I mean, I, I've been uh, I've been messing with them recently, and uh, dude, I, I'm stoked on what you can do, and just the fact that that they support IPFS and everything that we're trying to do is like blowing my mind. So that's going to be our next little our next little thing that we try to put out to kind of bootstrap this whole little network and community. Man, that's I just sick. wanted to mention um, at December, yeah. on the top level, they had uh-huh. uh, they had like a cool little. Uh, like hacker workshop and they had all these uh, raspberry pies up there and they had all the components that you need and all the wires and the solder and yeah cable. and uh, it'd be cool to do something like that you know uh, at one of these events Ooh. you know just uh, absolutely just man i mean everybody. it's just it's very like it, you don't take up much electricity it doesn't make any noise you know you, you, you if you put a fan on you don't even have to like really like it's the coolest little piece of tech and yeah man like i said i know i'm a little late to the party but damn it's it's awesome <laughs> ah we're we're all still early we're all still early <laughs> Uh, but yeah man that's that's it for me uh i do thank you so much too for having me on cam i mean appreciate it brother yeah, no, uh, again, thanks for, you know, thinking of me for hosting this. I'm glad hopefully we can sort out the video. I'll get that, you know, whatever yeah. the recording or whatnot. I'm, there's, mm-hmm. that's editors, editors, leave it yeah, to the editors. editors. <laughs> the KDL, figure out the syncing, dude, hopefully. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, they're, yeah, good, um, they're good at their editing. Yeah, no, uh, again, all I wanted to say is just thank you very much for everyone who came through today. Um, you know, huge shout out, obviously, to some of the other projects. NFT guys, we've got Miners of Cadania here, the My- uh, Cadena Mining Club. I see Cryptnod in here from the old Cadena Kongs. Uh, quite a few co- community members. Action, thanks yeah. for coming by. Um, what's up, Bendy? You know, what's up, Bendy? Yeah, I see Gal 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 Louise there. Sorry if I I butcher that name, but I see you around all the time. So just thank you very much for you know supporting me, Over. supporting the Good community, door. and um, yeah. and yeah, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day, great weekend, I guess I should say. Um, and yeah, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta steal that one, right? But yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. So again, uh, IDO is open for registration for DocuShield. Uh, you got a few days to do so. Um, I think it was around what tw- you said. Twelve hundred dollars is the twelve fifty uh, maximum the fair distribution. Yeah. yeah. So. So 1250 USD, um, there will be a lock of maximum of three months or October 1st by the latest, um, or sorry, minimum and maximum, I should say. Um, but yeah, uh, check them out. Uh, there will be a recording of this. So thank you and appreciation to anyone who shares it, likes it, retweets it, all that fun stuff. Um, and I guess there might be a YouTube video too coming soon. So 
keep uh, keep your eyes out for that. Um, and yeah, oh, I guess I should say that if you want to register, it is through KD Launch as well. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think I missed head that. Over KD Launch. Launch. <laughs> yeah, head over to KD Launch, and that's uh, yeah. And there's that. So that's me butchering the uh, the outro. But, <laughs> but no, thanks again for everyone who came by. And yeah, you guys all have a great day too. All right. Thank you. See y'all later. Thanks.